what I'm doing now, I'm just being assertive. I'm not being, I'm not making him fight for his life. I'm not trying to dominate him. I'm just doing what I want to do as a leader. This, this dog is so sensitive. See him trying to go after the flies even though I'm on him? He doesn't like flies. Yeah. I've never seen his tail under it like that yeah. before. Is your heart beating very fast? Of course it is, yeah. And it's beating fast because I'm going to take the muzzle off to prove what I'm saying. Where is it safe for me to be? Anywhere you want to sit. Anywhere you want to sit. Just sit My down. Friend. Just sit down. You guys can just relax. I see a lot of dogs like this because we created it. But then that's not what we want when we go to Starbucks. We want to sit out and have a cup of coffee or go where other dogs are or where people are. It's not what we want. Was that nice to see that? Yes. With the muzzle off and yes. kind of... Yes, I'm, I'm very impressed. Why should we have to deal with aggressive dogs? I mean, there's some humans whose crimes are so severe and extreme that we say we cannot reach that person. Mm -hmm. He is beyond help. Okay. And don't you, would you not think that there are dogs for whom that's also true? Well, you know, that, that's an interesting question because, you know, I've been doing this for over 25 years and personally, I have not met that dog. When trainers work with a dog like this and say, this dog needs to be destroyed, then you overstepped your professional boundary. I will take this dog and never tell him to sit, to down, to heal, to stay, or to come, or any other training word, and just exist with him emotionally, hormonally, within the moment, and make a change with that dog, just hanging with me. You know, let's say I'm a busy 21st century person with kids and a job and a car and all the million annoyances of the modern life, and I don't want to live in a way that's going to make sense to a primitive animal. Mm -hmm. I just want to live a normal suburban life, mm -hmm. and I want a dog that's going to go along with that right. and not give me any hassles. Right. Well, I, I don't think that that's how most people think. I think that's how most people have been taught to think. That's what I believe. Right. You know, the so, house but, and the car and the picket fence and all of that, you know. And then you meet someone that can tell you that material objects are not that important, that that is not where you're going to find your happiness. And suddenly all the stress of having all those things that you wanted are no longer stressful because they're not that important. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, man. Sit down. Don't say anything. Just sit down. <laughs> this is how you exist within the moment. <laughs> it's not about, it's just about being, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. Is, he, is this good? That's fine. He does not feeling afraid. It's as though that moment when you took him out and you, you sort of stood over him, that rebooted his... His, his computer in some way, and... Isn't that how life is? And it, since then, he's been a different dog. Isn't that how life is, though, when, when someone can reach out and touch you and change the way you think? If I could thank my dogs a thousand times a day, it would not be enough with everything that they have taught me.